putting, we are looking here, is pernicious anemia. So what is intrinsic factor is there absorbing B12. And when the stomach has a problem, we are not absorbing. What are we not absorbing here? Is B12 and B12 deficiency leading into what? Pernicious anemia. So let's go back here, gastritis part. Now first thing I just wanted to remind before we move further, what is in our stomach is hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. What is intrinsic factor does? Absorb B12. Any questions are going to be, any patient who has a chronic gastritis, what are we going to monitor immediately? Pernicious anemia. Whenever they do stomach surgery, what is it going to affect here? Pernicious anemia. So I will move on on gastritis question. But what are the other thing we keep it in mind? Patient is admitted with gastritis. What are the reason patient has gastritis would be? So what is the stomach problem with gastritis? Now you must read in our question and understand the patient problem. What would happen in gastritis is number one, Either they're eating a very spicy, high season food, and second thing are, so number one, the stomach has a lot to do with food we eat, our diet. Number two, our medication. Your questions are going to be drugs. And what questions are here with the medication when we are giving a patient? What other drugs are affecting the stomach? Number one, aspirin. And what is aspirin comes empty inflammatory NSAIDs. I want you to write down a steroids. A steroids, aspirin, and what is aspirin is? NSAID. So patient is taking NSAIDs, what are you looking for? Stomach problem. Why? Because they are irritating the stomach. Patient is taking a steroids, what are we monitoring? the stomach because it can lead to bleeding. Patient is returning back from radiation therapy. Remember, it affects the stomach. So your medications are, your steroids are, your aspirin, NSAIDs are there, radiation patients. Alcohol is affecting the stomach, underlying that. And next is, Gastritis comes from infection. Underline the word bacteria. Bacterial infection. What is bacterial infection comes from? H. pylori. It's called infection. So immediately, you got to start screening. Your patient has a problem with the stomach. What food they are eating? What medications they are taking? What treatment patient is on? And also remember, when they have gastritis, it could be infection. Not all the time are diet, not all the time are the medication, could be they have infection. Alcohol, smoking can affect, drugs can affect, food can affect. Everyone remember the word X pylori. Are we okay? So I want for NCLEX and for our exam and for our patient's history when we are looking. Those are the history we must look through for your patient. Do they have any infection? Are we treating them for infection? Data collection. Patient has acute gastritis. Acu what is the meaning acute? Acute means patient is really very sick. Acute means is really sick. Patient has acute problem. Any question when we say patient is admitted with acute, that means they're sick, very sick. And what would you be looking for acute gastritis? I put the easy answers at the back. Nausea, vomiting, we all know. Stomach is a problem, patient would have nausea and vomiting. But I want you to highlight the word hiccups, headache. Those are another side are there. Anorexia, we know, stomach problem, <coughs> nausea and vomiting, we know, discomfort, we know, headache, we will be, headache and hiccups, I want you to write down. Chronic gastritis, what is the meaning chronic? Ongoing problem. Acute means patient is really sick, chronic, ongoing problem. Always patient has a 
problem with chronic gastritis. What are the signs for chronic gastritis are sour taste in the mouth, underline that word, and is nausea vomiting, but very important is B12 deficiency. Why? Because they are having chronic problem. The stomach is upset all the time. What is it going to affect leading anemia? And what kind of anemia would be pernicious anemia? So your questions are, as you move on your question, and just reminding how we will look to for patient's problem. Patient is coming acute, patient has nausea, vomiting, upset stomach. Acute means maybe hiccups, maybe headache, could be another sign. Chronic, or you're looking for what is B12 deficiency. Now I will move on intervention. So everyone is okay, the stomach problems are, what are the reasons for stomach problem? I'm repeating it back here, is number one, diet. What kind of diet patient is taking? What drugs patients are taking? Maybe the next thing is bacterial infection. And what is the one of the reasons for bacterial infection are H. pylori. And now I will move on is intervention. Your patient is admitted with gastritis, what do you do? Anytime patients are acutely sick and it's a stomach, they have nausea and vomiting, the first thing is NPO, nothing by mouth. So how do we treat gastritis? Number one, NPO. Because they have nausea and vomiting, they can keep anything in the stomach, maybe IV fluids they can give. Diet, if you are looking into, they can give clear liquid diet. Clear liquid diet, they will start, and monitoring for gastritis are, when there's a problem in the stomach, patient may have a start what? Ulcers and bleeding. And so what is the word is called when patient is having gastritis, a real stomach problem, or what do we monitor? The word is called hematemesis. What is hematemesis? Word is vomiting. And so uh, highlight the word, Hematemesis is vomiting. We must know the terminology. They're not going to say vomiting blood. They're going to use the word hematemesis. So we must know when there is a question, patient is admitted with hematemesis, what system are we looking? GI, because the blood is where from the vomiting. So one of the complications. When we are bleeding, patient is going into what? Shock. And at the end, you have tachycardia, hypotension, sign of bleeding. What food do you avoid? Any irritating food, your caffeine, alcohol, and also the spicy food. And what do you treat them when patient has gastritis is B12 injection. Let me repeat here back again, gastritis. Everyone must know what is in our stomach we have, hydrochloric acid, and we have intrinsic factor. Question, patient is admitted with gastritis, always screen them. What are the reason patient has gastritis? Maybe what kind of food they are taking and are they drinking alcohol, are they smokers? Second thing, you look for drugs. What are the common drugs I mentioned are NSAIDs and the steroids are very common are leading into what? GI bleeding and GI irritation. The very important is infection. Not all the time are drugs. Another thing, but somebody who has bacterial infection, that is H. pylori. What does gastritis lead to? Pernicious anemia. Why? Because of the intrinsic factor. Next, I'm going to move on ulcers. So we have on the same page, page number four is the ulcer. And what is in ulcer we have are is two kinds of ulcer, duodenal and gastric ulcer. But first thing, I want you to highlight where it says the peptic ulcer or ulcers, what are the reason for ulcers we have? What are the reason for ulcers are? Number one, a stress. And number two, we have there, a smoking and alcohol can lead ulcer. So don't forget the stress. We got to teach to avoid stress. Then, second thing is, I said the medication, but I want you to highlight the word family history. It's in the end there, and also infection. Then we remember, we said the diet and alcohol, 
and smoking. So these three, four things we must remember. What would we teach our patient to prevent from ulcer? Number one is the stress. And number two, how do you treat ulcer? Not all the time by diet, but they got to treat the infection. And other reason for ulcers are what kind of food we are eating, and the patient is a smoker, or they are drinking alcohol. So ulcer can be caused by predisposing factor, and everyone must know the word X pyloric, a stress in family history. Now I'm going to go on kinds of ulcer we have. Number one is duodenal ulcer. So when we are saying is duodenal ulcer, what is that duodenal ulcers are? Is in the duodenum. And what are the signs of duodenal ulcers are? Number one, underline the word, what age group are common? You have 30 to 60 years, but very important wording, hypersecretion. Too much of acid in the, in the duodenum. So hypersecretion of acidity or hydrochloric acid. And in duodenal ulcer pain. Where is the pain? Underline the word epigastric. And when does the pain comes? That is important here. The pain comes two to three hours or midnight. When does the pain comes? Two to three hours or midnight, in the middle of the night. Any question or patient is admitted, patient says, I have a pain after I'm eating my meals two to three hours or I get up in the middle of the night. Immediately we will know what kind of ulcer patient has, duodenal ulcer. The next thing is important, pain is relieved by Food. How does the pain is relieved? Patient says, if I eat food, my pain gets better. That's a duodenal ulcer. And where is the blood in the duodenal ulcer is called melina. What is the word melina here? The blood is in the stool. So where is the blood? In the stool. Mostly it's going in the BM. Everyone is okay, duodenal ulcer. When does the pain come? It doesn't come right away. Very important that we recognize because there may be a question. They don't give diagnosis and if they say patient is admitted and patient says I get pain in the middle of night, immediately you know it's a duodenal ulcer. Patient says I get pain in two to three hours after I'm eating is a duodenal ulcer. Now you tell me where is the blood here? Where is the blood? In the stool. What is the word it's called? Malina. So remember, patient is admitted, patient has malina. What system are you going to assess? GI. Where is the, what is the one of the reason could be for bleeding? Maybe ulcer. And patient has what kind of ulcer? Duodenal ulcer. Everyone is okay, what kind of ulcer we are talking here? Duodenal ulcer. Now I will move on, gastric ulcer. What is gastric ulcer comes over 50 years of age? Underline the word hyposecretion. Also remember, whenever they have is no secretion could be sign of cancer for the patient. So write down the word low hydrochloric acid also can be sign of cancer of the stomach. So hyposecretion of the stomach fluid is in gastric ulcer and half an hour or one hour. If they didn't give and they didn't say half an hour and they're saying gastric ulcer pain, patient is admitted and patient complain pain in 30 to 60 minutes or they're saying within an hour and what kind of pain patient has is what ulcer patient has here? Gastric ulcer. And what does the patient say here? If I eat food, pain is increased by food consumption. After eating, my pain gets more worse. And where would you see the vomiting is here? Where? In hematemesis. What is hematemesis? Is their vomiting blood. So everyone is okay? Gastric ulcer, what do they have? Hematemesis. 
Duodenal ulcer, what does the patient has more? Malina. Which one relieved the pain? Which patient is relieved the pain? What ulcer? Duodenal ulcer. What happened in gastric ulcer? Pain get worse when they are eating food. Everyone is all right? So far what we talked about the ulcer and the reason for ulcers are, what are the reason for ulcer? Let's review. A stress, yes. Smoking, alcohol, spicy food, infection. I want everyone, don't forget. We all know, you will figure it out, the diet, I know, smoking, but very important, infection. What infection are we treating here? What kind of infection? H. pylori. So everyone is okay? The problem with GI ulcers are family history, a stress, the food we are eating, smoking can cause, and very important is infection. Are we all right? So what are the two kinds of ulcer? We said duodenal ulcer and gastric ulcer. Which one comes early pain? within 32 seconds, 60 seconds. Which one? Yeah. Gastric ulcer. So gastric ulcer pain comes early, within an hour, and duodenal ulcer pain comes two to three hours. Are we okay about ulcer? Now let's go in dimension. I do have some drugs here, and as we move on, is number one, intervention. What do you do? What are you? If there is, we are asking, patient is admitted for ulcer, what are we monitoring? What are we monitoring here is bleeding. What, are, what is the word is called for bleeding? I want you to write down the word perforation. So what are we monitoring for ulcer patients for bleeding? What is the other word we are saying for bleeding here is the perforation. And what are you monitoring your patient when they start perforation and bleeding? They're going into what? Shock. Everyone is okay? What are we monitoring ulcer patients are? For bleeding, perforation, and hypovolemic shock. That's number one. And now I will move some diet question. Now it says bland diet, underline the word. What kind of diet we give? Bland diet. The meaning bland diet, non-irritating food. And what do we treat them? Antibiotic. If there is infection, how do we treat them? By giving antibiotic. And the next thing is antacids. You're going to give antacids. Now, we, I have few drugs. Drugs are very important as we are moving on. Are what are the drugs we have here? It's called proton pump inhibitor. Proton pump inhibitor, if you will look at the word, is called Prezzol. If you see all the medication, Nexium, and you're seeing Prezzol word at the end, Asmoparazol. So what is the Prezzols are? P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. Everyone start memorizing the ending word. What is Prezzols are? They are for GI system. And what are those drugs comes under? Proton pump inhibitor. And what is proton pump inhibitor are your prosol. And what do you monitor you're giving for your patient here are what do you monitor when you're giving prosol? So everyone, if you don't remember the name of the drugs, what is proton pump inhibitor are for ulcers? And what are the last word is prosol. What do you monitor when you're giving prosol? Underline the word diarrhea, headache. And what does it do? Suppress the acid. And when do you take before meal? So what is prosols are you're giving before meal? What is it suppressing? Acidity in the stomach. What do you monitor? Diarrhea. And I want you to write at there, increases sugar, hyperglycemia. So some of the prosol when you're giving, what do you monitor? Blood sugar. So at there, hyperglycemia. Increases the sugar level. And also, I want you to write down what lab is important here is liver function test. So what do we monitor when we are giving prosol? Our liver function test. So I, I have few drugs in each package because very important we know some drugs. So when patient has ulcer, 
What drugs are we giving here are prezol. What is prezols are is more for your decreasing the acidity in the stomach. And when do you give before patient is eating and what do you monitor are is diarrhea, where it is number one, I said headache, and increasing sugar. And what do we monitor patient here are for is the blood sugar and the liver function test. I'll finish one few more and then we will stop and take a little break. Cytotac. What is cytotac is another medication. And I want you to highlight the word there, diarrhea and abdominal pain. Cytotac is also medication they use for ulcer and write the, highlight the word diarrhea and abdominal pain. Carafate is another medication. When you're giving carafate, what do you monitor here? Constipation. And highlight the word increasing absorption of cumadine. Cumadine is a blood thinner. Dilantin is a seizure medication. Theophylline is bronchodilator. So what happens when you're giving a long carafate with cumadine and dilantin and theophylline, it increases the toxicity, increasing the effect of the medication. So increasing the absorption, very common drugs we all should know are cumadine, dilantin, and theophylline. Now, H2 receptor, histamine receptor. What is histamine receptors are also given to decrease secretion, and they are called tedine. You can write down on the side, tedine. One is prezol, and second word, tedine, T-I-D-I-N-E. Tedine are histamine receptors, and what are they doing uh, here? is decreasing the gastric acidity. What does it relieve heartburn? And you're using for patient with peptic ulcer or ulcer patient. But what do you be careful before you start if they have renal, kidney, and liver problem? Number one is tadine, is simetadine. Tadine is one of the drugs, simetadine. Underline the word tagamet. Tagamet is one of the drugs. And what does it help to decrease the acidity? And very important, if you leave, go into the second paragraph, simetadine, and second line, side effect is confusion. So when you're giving is simetadine, what do you monitor patient are confusion. Last line, cumadine, dilantin, theophylline, also it affects the medication is, is increasing the effect. The last one, Zentec. All these are tadine medication. Zentec, you can not affect it by food and you can give and does not cause confusion. But cementadine, very important, we must know, is causing confusion. We'll take a break now and then we'll continue and we'll be back in 10 minutes, okay? Nasıl? Oğlum ba. Hayır,